All right, so welcome to episode 38, 38, that's the one. So I've made some notes so I can keep on track. I'm going to have a wine because in real time it's uh, it's Sunday and I was going to have one and then I thought I need to record this episode. So I'm going to combine the two. So if I start talking a load of nonsense, then I'll probably just have to re-record it, not on Sunday. But, right, episode... Popped back out. <laughs> episode 32. Oh, I haven't even had a wine yet. Episode 38, right? In episode 37, it was a case of we was getting stuff fixed, but then for everything we got fixed, something else broken. Um, yeah, and then the issue with the bike, and someone told me recently I deserved to have that bike stolen. It weren't stolen yet. I think I've just said that in real time since. It was still at this point attached to the lamppost. The issue was, having it on the boat, the plan was I was going to go sell the frame. That's what I was going to do with it. And um, it, it was getting like rusty being on the boat. It was a nice bike. I used to use it when I was on the campsite to get from the campsite to the boat. And it was quite good. But then it, it weren't really practical then when I had it on the boat. I, I couldn't get it inside the boat. And if I did, it just took up too much space inside. Um I know I've seen sailing channels where they store it in like the V berth or whatever bed they're not using, but it's, it, yeah, it weren't really doable on this boat. That's not to mean I wanted someone to hit it in the van one night or car, whatever it was, and, and break it because I was planning to sell it. It's part of the reason I took it off the boat was to prevent it from getting like rustier. And then, yeah, he went. So, it's months ago. Don't want to think about it now because it's gone, it's happened, it's done. Right, so yeah, things were getting fixed. And then every time I turned the corner, something else broke. So like I just replaced the dinghy engine and then the thing happened with the bike. And then right at the end of the episode, I lost the GoPro. So that was in coming, that just gone into June. It was the 6th of June. So I'd just gone through them days of like having to be stuck at anchor with like zero money. Um... And weirdly, I would say that it seems to happen every time. It's happened here in real time too, where something happens, I end up in a situation, and for the first few days, it's oh, it's a nightmare. But then I sometimes would say that in the chaos or the the bad situation, things start to come together. So during that time at Anchor, when I was stuck there in like the previous episodes you've been watching, not the last one, but the ones before... Um, I had to go out there in a rush I wasn't ready to be out there when I first got out there the electrics weren't working at all um, and yeah for the first few days it was a bit oh, I'm going to do and then we met the people from SV Rihanna who if you're still watching hope all is well and I don't know if you're still in Corsica if you give me a message another phone's gone since then I'll give you a call I just don't I don't have your number anymore on my telephone so I'm going to start having a book like this with numbers in because I just constantly lose numbers. Some of the people I've met in the last few months, I just don't have the number anymore. So I just wait for them to, to message me. So if you are watching, give me a message. I'll give you a call and we'll have a see where we see where we're at. Um, but yeah, got there, seen them. They were them, you know, them first few days where it was like, what am I going to do? And then slowly things started to come together. So then there's the episode where. I'd done the, the mount for the solar panels and then I got the batteries working again and doing it all from anchor and slowly like slowly getting there so there was that and that was quite good but then just with a GoPro going up until that point I'd I was really like every day I'd pick the GoPro up and I'd, I'd show what I was doing and then that happened and I only had like a really crap phone with a crap video on so i didn't really record much on that either and because of that I, I didn't really do much in that time from the 6th of june until like the 12th or whatever it was of july where i got the the gopro replaced i kept looking for like a cheap one but i, I just couldn't find one um but eventually i did so the gopro went in the water and yeah, I should have gone straight in after it, but I didn't. I don't know why. 
Um, and then I just thought I'll be able to snorkel, get the snorkel on, dive down, um, and try find it. But it went right in the thick, thick seagrass. So I did go put the snorkel on, go have a look, tried to dive down. I managed to get down. I've actually got quite a lot better at doing that because I used to just not be able to go at all. But I can now get down like seven meters without fins. Don't know why that resembles fins, but yeah, I used to be able to not get down at all. And I've got pretty good at it now. Um, but regardless, I'd get down and I can't hold my breath that long still. This one fly, all yeah. Um, so yeah, I could, I can get down now. But I got down, and that seagrass is way high. Like the GoPro has obviously just sank into it, and thought right, maybe I need because I couldn't hold my breath. So I thought I go get some scuba diving gear. So I went and hired a scuba diving bottle. Tried to go down with that. I got to the point I could like go along the seagrass but I were up for like putting my hand and rummaging around in there where I've seen like the other boat caught an eel like god knows what's in there so I weren't going to go start rummaging around with my hand trying to find the GoPro and by that point I didn't know its exact location anyway so if I'd have known pinpoint exactly where it was in the water and ideally I should have tried to to do that make a point but it wouldn't have been that accurate anyway and yeah I had to just accept it was gone anyway from there what I did was I was still um and ah and about taking the boat out of the water and I was quite I did go have a look it was going to cost me about struggling to do it for less than 600 and then a lot of the ports are funny about you then living on the boat as well so I, it involved me sneaking in and out of like the shipyard and if I'd if I'd had to do it, I would have done it. But while I was down, while I had the scuba diving bottle, and I was under the boat anyway, I thought I'd give it a go. So I got a, I got a scraper, went under, it, and it came off fairly easily. So I spent a good day doing that. That gave me the idea that I could do other other boats. And someone told me that I missed an opportunity because they had the the sailing. Where all the classic like sailboats, they were all in Antibes for like a weekend. And really, if I'd have thought, I could have gone because someone told me that people were there desperate for someone to get in and clean the bottom of the boat. And I could have charged quite a bit. But it's an idea for maybe spring. We'll see wherever I am when it comes to spring. Um, but yeah, scuba diving and, and, and cleaning the bottom of the boat is, is very doable. It's, it's a bit rubbish that I didn't get any footage of it. But obviously I didn't have the GoPro because it would have been quite nice to, to show the difference it made. Um, but I can tell you since it's made like a huge difference. And I'm not racing the boat. But trips that used to take me a day, at least now, it's I'd say it's doubled the, the whole speed. People might think I'm exaggerating. But honestly, the boat just moves so much quicker after. It probably needs doing again now. But um, maybe I'll do it during the winter. Go hire a bottle from somewhere, and I'll I'll show you, show you how I did it. But yeah, that's what I did with the hull. And then it was weeks later when I actually had to move and realised actually maybe I can get away with not taking it out of the water for now. The issue with taking it out of the water and not really having the funds I need for everything is I want to do everything while it's out, and I I don't then plan on don't then plan on taking it out anytime soon. Um, because I would just make sure I kept swimming underneath and keeping it clean because it's an expensive like thing. I've got the anti-fouling pit in. Did use some of it to make a boat tow sign the other day, but I didn't have any other paint. But um, I have got the anti-fouling paint as well. But some sea cocks really need replacing. The toilet flush one's not working. I think it's blocked. So uh, the the depth sounder's not attached. So. There's various bits I need to do when I take it out of the water. And if I'm going to do it, I may as well, like, probably not the, probably not the whole, um, I don't know, maybe. If it's out of the water, I may as well do the, do the, do the bits to it. And yeah, as time's gone on, again, I don't want to go too much on about real time because it spoils the episodes a bit, but like, I'm not, I'm, 
I'm a bit cautious at the minute about how much more money I want to throw into this but I'm not saying I'm not gonna like I really am not because most of the time I feel like it wouldn't sit well with me if I didn't do what I want to do in this book but it's a story for another time um, but yeah when it when it comes out if it comes out I need to have all the parts ready and I need to do all the things so I'm not then retaking it out of the water and in real time too now with the the mast as it is that would have to be put into to it coming out so I ended up doing it with a scuba diving gear and I've just taken a long time to explain that let me get back to my page what did I do then so from there what I did was I couldn't really do anything else and in the video before on episode 37 I'd been to the shop and I'd bought like various bits of sandpaper uh, some some like mastic epoxy filler um, all sorts so I then spent quite a lot of time on the deck which was, it was all just painted white I think I've explained already but actually kind of digging into the bits that like the little imperfections it's still not perfect but I'd say it's 70% better than what it was um, I then ended up rushing finishing it because I needed the boat to be white again in order to do some boat trips but that's coming up um, anyway while while I had the boat in that middle stage I was looking at all sorts of ways to make to, ways to make money and um, I know that in Antibes and I've gone on about Antibes quite a lot you have all these like yachts that go out they don't have any experience they don't know how to do like deck work etc so I ended up doing it's a crazy thing you do to make money when <laughs> you don't have a way I feel like I just make up jobs for myself but um, I ended up doing some workshops and I did actually do a few Annoyingly, I didn't realise that Facebook sends messages through to spam because I actually could have done a lot more. And it's only months down the line when I'd advertised for something else, I saw all these messages in spam. Obviously, that's after I was doing it. That's really annoying because I could have made probably quite a bit more money. But I didn't. I didn't charge like a lot, and I I weren't getting people to come do work on the boat. I was getting them to come, and then I was explaining the stuff I was doing and. Like I'd show them me, for example, polishing the stainless steel after learning that if you leave it on the deck, it goes rusty um, and and the difference it makes and how you I like the barbecue, for example, how you can. If you've got inox or stainless steel and it's a bit rusty, it's easy to think that's rusty and get rid. But it's amazing how much you can bring it back to life. Um, I showed them how to use, use some like epoxy filler and how to open up the spider cracks and if you don't open up the spider cracks and you paint over them all the stuff i'd learned myself either on this boat doing that boat project and various other stuff so i did a few workshops charged i think 20 euros per person i picked them up in the dinghy brought them over to the boat spent a day on the boat with me going around and it it was like it was a workshop and the people actually afterwards said it it was quite good and they learned quite a lot so yeah that that was pretty good um but in doing that i was putting off actually just finishing off the boat and then the boat trip started to come around so another thing i was doing in that time is i was actively trying to advertise some boat trips i know that some people and i know myself the the it's risky um however what i will say is here i kind of get left alone most of the time because of the the boats registered in the UK and there's a, there's other people other people doing it too the only thing the only near prob like I know someone who's been stopped by the boat police before they're not they're only bothered I mean they would be bothered you have to just say you've got your friends on the boat and I was quite careful who I did boat trips for so like I would, not that I knew the people well but it was all friends or friends or whatever it, so it was it was all right and I did you know I, I sold them really cheap as well so that they were just like laid back sort of boat trips where 
I earned a little bit of money, but there's more coming up on the boat trips. But there was quite a bit of, I did quite a bit of trying to advertise them. Um, I'd done a few little ones during that month, I think, but not, not that many. Um, yeah, so there was that to do. That's what I was doing quite a bit. Replaced the Genoa, which we won't talk about, but um, we'll pretend it's still there. But yeah, I replaced the Genoa and that's an interesting story on its own because I, someone I'd met who then, someone, the person I'd met when my, I'd lost that phone when I was in Golf Juan and I needed to get onto Revolut to get onto the banking app. Well then, um, that person then knew somebody who had a sailboat that had dropped from a ramp and was then a wreck and they had various bits on the sailboat. <laughs> anyway, this person I've never met comes and uh, picks me up from where I was anchored and we drive all the way to like Nice maybe? I can't even remember. We just went on the road and drove off. Don't get in strangers' cars. I know then you're an adult. That's maybe not the same but I didn't know this person like he was just getting the car drive off somewhere and that <laughs> that's not anything but then um we get to we get to where this stuff stored and I, I might have told this story already but we get to where the stuff stored and the building is quite a nice apartment building i'm looking thinking you know it's very french it was quite old looking but i'm like oh like you wouldn't store the stuff in here like the person doesn't live here it must that would cost quite a lot anyway we we'll go through the door and then there's like a door going downstairs. And I was like, ah, that explains it. So he opens this creaky old door and there's these steps going down. And I'm like, oh, I'm just going into a basement with a stranger. Like, I've seen the film The Hostel. He's <laughs> like, ah. Oh. Anyway, go down, the, go down the thing. And honestly, I wish I had a photo of it. I'm going to need to try find the photo to show you somehow. I'll message the person and see if I can get a photo for you. But when I come down the stairs, there's just these, like, doors. You know when you watch a horror horror film and you just don't do it? Like, don't go do what you're about to do. That's very much what this looked like. These doors looked haunting. This guy I've never met. And then we go, we go into one of the doors... Luckily then I did see boat stuff and I felt a little bit more comfortable, but it was a weird experience. Anyway, yeah, got the got the Genoa from from him and then he had various other bits and I was trying to be quite careful not to just take loads of stuff I didn't need. I didn't really have any money. It was only when I, because I got two winches as well, which now I was going to replace the two I've got here because they're a bit crap. But um, now in the current situation, I maybe maybe they're useful to sell and an autopilot as well which he didn't i didn't he said it worked i didn't know if it was going to work or not but anyway i got the whole lot for a, a hundred euros and i was really struggling to find a genoa before that and it was smaller than i needed and i i don't know if it was that or if it was the furler generally that was stopping me from being able to furl it but it was big enough so went and got that sorted socially not a lot like I, I it just kind of became fairly normal like to the point i didn't like the town i was in i didn't even really want to go and try and have a drink there i think one night i went and got a beer and it was nine euros and i just it was a bottle of beer and i was like and then because i'm on my own as well when then some other people came and wanted a table it almost felt like they was ushering me out and just it weren't worth going and it's not the sort of place where it's like you meet other other people similar like that that's like um a neighboring town to antibes where maybe it's a little bit cheaper accommodation wise so a lot of like the yachties will go take up accommodation there but did i like golf Yuan? i can't say i did um and you're probably starting to think I don't like anywhere, but stay tuned because it's not really the case. But there, it's again, it's just rich people on holiday. Everything's expensive. I literally used to just go in, go to the shop and 
get back out of there. Um, spent a few more days at the library. May have gone to one or two other meetups in Cannes. In fact, yeah, I definitely did go to at least one because that's how I ended up then selling some boat trips. Um, but yeah, socially not a lot. The 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 guy I got the Genoa off and the girl that lent me the phone that time. I did have a barbecue one evening with them on the boat. And yeah, actually, no, they weren't like... I did then meet this other English guy who was on a boat that I nearly bought years ago and got talking to him quite a bit too. I think I've mentioned before, he was like really at peace with just sitting there on his boat all all summer at anchor. Um, but yeah, socially, not not nothing much happened. It was as has been the other episodes, really. Um, so yeah, setting up boat trips, said that. Tried to find a GoPro, said that. Cheers. Um, what else? Oh, the storm. So you've probably seen, there was a, I'd done a live, like, a fairly, well, a, it was storms. I've, I've been in bigger winds and bigger waves since, but because it was a storm, just, there was a, a real feeling one day came out of nowhere and all of a sudden I'm there on the back of the boat I'd picked the spear gun up for the first time in months and had the snorkel and thought I'm going to go swim over to the side and try to do a bit of snorkeling or whatever and it was really sunny and the sea was really flat and I don't know what what it was but I had a feeling something wasn't quite right and I will say I did get a little bit complacent because most of the time I was protected and then some days I forgot to check the weather and then this would happen um but yeah just it somewhat felt a bit strange the sea had gone really flat and it was flat there quite a lot of the time but it had gone really really flat and I was like so it looked like perfect to go and have a swim but some of it just weren't sitting right and I was like seem to go quiet i don't know how to explain it but yeah and then the next minute just a little bit of a ripple started and i was like some summit's definitely coming and then all of a sudden the, the swell from the south was there the boat was over the waves the waves were about it, it always says three seconds but literally it's always a case of as you're coming down you're up the next one so that started and I was like, oh, looked at the weather and the weather didn't end up doing what the weather said it was going to do. Um, but then I saw like a few clouds over in the distance and stuff and was like, oh. anyway, the next minute, all all of the little power boats, because they never anchor properly, they just zoom into somewhere, the little day boats. I think it was on the week, probably on the weekend too, because I remember there were quite a few. They just come in, drop the anchor and as soon as the anchors touch the bottom, they think they're safe so they all went like i watched three just drifting past me and i was like watching mine thinking hold please hold please hold and so all the power boats went first and then the sailboat started going and i was like oh is it gonna pass and the weather was suggesting it was gonna pass but it wasn't passing and then uh i just had to set off out into it and so yeah we go from like four three four o'clock in the afternoon of it being like super sunny and yeah that that was that was bad as i said in the live and i'll try post a link to the live and if i forget someone just tell me in the comments because i always say this and i don't always watch the video back myself um but yeah in in the live like just went out into it it weren't nice i weren't ready my all the washing up was still like on the side of the boat uh, not on the side, just around the cockpit. And then um, some some got wrapped in the engine. It turned into a crisis. Went over towards the Lerins Island. The wind sp spun around. Then I started drifting towards the island, but you can't anchor at the island. And yeah, thinking back, if I if I was going to hit the rocks, I'd throw out an anchor. Probably it would have been the last resort. But um. In the midst of doing all of this, I went to go pull the mainsail up. Because at that point, the Genoa weren't... I don't even think I had the Genoa by then. So I went to go put the mainsail up. And um, 
as I did it, a wave hit, and I, I hadn't yet attached the top bit, but I, had, I hadn't attached the halyard to the top of the mainsail, and I had all of the thing, and a wave came, and I didn't have hold of anything, so naturally, because that was in my hand, I just pulled on that, fell back, it pulled it up too far, right out of the out of the mast so then i had to like try and find a way to to do it then it was then it got too windy so i had this like dodgy sort of like i don't know if it's a storm sail one day i'm gonna get it out and someone can tell me what it is i don't even know if it was for this boat it's just a random piece of sail and i managed to just get that attached but in doing so i was getting thrown around the boat and at one point the the rope that was then actually attached literally took me out <laughs> over the top of the like um like the running side metal running rigging um what's that called safety line whatever that is over the top of that back in but backwards and my back smashed off the mast and then i hit the deck and i remember even now just thinking it i do all right with pain i know i've probably told this story already but it really hurt like really really hurt like i and the next few days it was hurting i probably should have gone to the doctor or something but um i just thought you gotta get up like and i remember getting up shouting i don't know who i'm shouting at like <laughs> shouting at the sky going something along the lines of you're gonna have to do better than that i don't know why it was it was just it was rough that that storm and just got the sail up just in time before I ended up like near the rocks on the Lerins Islands. And the problem then was the wind died right, right down. And then I was surrounded by like super yachts and I've got like this little bit of sail and the boat's only just moving. And it took me a good few hours to then try get over to where I could drop the anchor. And just as I got over there, this big black cloud came and just the squall underneath it. The sail then just went, just picked up on the boat, just started charging through the water. I just had to go with it. So I went from four o'clock to then suddenly it's it's like oh, two in the morning or something. And I had to anchor in some really, really deep water. But yeah, there's a live, a live to that. Um, but yeah, other than that, I did do quite a bit. Of, the only thing I could say I did a lot of was, you know, doing little holes in the in the in the deck and little imperfections and sanding them down and that was all quite time consuming but obviously i don't have any footage of it but you didn't you didn't really miss anything i didn't i didn't go anywhere so yeah that's episode 38 um it was yeah as the rest of time and grand and it weren't much different to the episodes that are, that, that are coming up if anything i got the gopro back and that that was then like a bit of motivation to actually get some stuff done so yeah that's that's what happened it, it did take some getting back into it because i just i'd stopped doing it as well i would say during that time I'd, i spent a lot of time trying to just like enjoy being where i was it, it, it weren't working um i, I were in the i I should have gone anywhere but stayed where I was but it, it ended up then being about like money and trying to make some money and I did end up doing that so but yeah I just would go out some days but like try to lay on the boat listen but just surrounded by power boats and it, it weren't as it weren't as I imagined it was gonna be but um yeah you end up you end up just getting burnt after a few days and then you can't do that anymore and you, then you can't escape the sun so that's yeah that's what happened <laughs> that's episode 38 um episode 39 is already on um because i uploaded it at the wrong time and going forwards i am probably i'm probably just gonna get them uploaded because i, I now want to focus on what what i'm doing now um so yeah that's the plan so thanks for watching and yeah probably i probably am gonna just upload the videos fairly quickly now or i'll still or i'll do it once a week but i do feel if i did that everyone's gonna then 
if I upload one one day a week of what I'm doing now and then one of what, what was from before, I feel like then uh, nobody will really watch the ones from before. But let me know in the comments what you think because I am a bit unsure what to do. But um, yeah, I've got quite a lot of episodes already queued on YouTube, so I've been busy with that. And... Yeah, I won't say anything more about the real time because it gets confusing. So just treat this as episode 38. So in episode 39 is me getting the GoPro back. Is it? Or have I uploaded two? No, yeah, episode 39 is me getting the GoPro back. And then tomorrow I'm going to upload episode 40. And yeah, thanks for watching. Thanks to everyone who supported on Patreon. Um, that's always really useful when it gets to the end of the month. I always forget it's there. And then um, I end up really needing something. And then, yes. So I really appreciate that. Um, and yeah, I really appreciate all the comments I've got recently. Especially everyone saying to keep, keep doing it, keep doing it. Because sometimes without doing this i wouldn't have as much motivation so thanks to everyone who puts up with my absences and me getting stuck places and everything else it's really appreciated uh and yeah i'm looking forward to uh uploading some more videos and there's some there's some pretty good episodes coming up like you see what i do in the summer to make some some money and do some bits of work on the galley that I keep teasing you all with because I'm not showing anyone yet but yeah I'll see you in the next episode thanks for watching